So by the time you all hear this Pisces Life listeners, we are calling this the quick dip because it is the holiday weekend. Now I am still smelling like barbecue. (laughs) Okay, my fire situation sis. Oh my goodness. First of all, I thank God that I'm over my fear of barbecuing. The very first time, Pisces Life listeners, and maybe you've heard me tell this story before, but the very first time that I ever barbecued, there was a very high wind. I had a very cheap grill, long story short, ended in a fire with the neighbors around me helping put it out. And I have not grilled since until very recently. That was back in 97. 96, 97 there. Uh-huh. So anyway, now that I done got a little grill and I'm all comfortable and whatnot, you know, I think I'm the grill master, sis. <laughs> oh, master. but that fire. Uh. First of all, to the makers of Kingsford Instant Lights, charcoal, lies. Uh-huh. Lies. Uh-huh. I still had to go get some juice from the store to light a fluid to put it on there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Have my stuff all arranged and a little pyramid up, you know, sort of fight. Mm-hmm. Since mm-hmm. I was not defeated, girl, I can't wait to eat that juicy steak. Yes, come hey. through. Come through Labor Day steak. I know that's right. How you doing, girl? How your Labor Day in the shy going? It's going good. Uh, so we're going to do just simple, maybe some dogs and some some hamburgers or something okay. on the grill. Mm-hmm. Um So super simple, nothing super major. We really wanted this weekend to be one that was full of relaxation and rest and no pressure. Like we are working super hard and it's like Labor Day for us really is like a day off. Like we really just wanted to kind of relax, relate and release, if you will. So I got up this morning and made a yummy breakfast, made some cheese grits and some fried fish so why didn't you invite see these be the days where i wish that you could just fedex a plate yes why don't fedex get into that business <laughs> i need you to go to my friend's house pick me up a plate and dash it in and dash it all over if we could like mail order quickly like cyber speed i have several friends out there in the interwebs that i would be getting plates from uh, Montoya's out there in Houston. That brother is a grill master with brisket. Oh, I mean, sis. it be looking so good. Since I've only had it one time when I was in Houston mm. some years back, but since it left a, a mark on my soul. <laughs> and every time he put it up, I just be like waving my hands, like testifying of how good it is. So there's several people that are just amazing cooks, home cooks, you know. Okay. Like, like putting they putting a foot in this food that I would love to to special order a plate. Shout out to Rashani out there in California. He just launched him a new catering business. Nice. And he's out there doing barbecue and, and all types of delicious sides and such. So yeah. yeah this is okay. a good time to to eat some good food, the holidays. It is. It, it is. And even though we're quarantined, yes, uh, Michigan is back on lockdown. We haven't left lockdown, honestly, but we got an extended lockdown. And last I looked, Chicago is also on an extended lockdown. Is yeah, that correct? We we just perpetually we, locked down. We, are per, we on perpetual <laughs> lockdown. We never really we never really came out. <laughs> you know how it is? Like you, you, we moved through the phases, but you really couldn't tell the difference between phase one and phase three. Yes, it's the same phase. It's just, it's you know, there are a couple things that a little more things that are open, but nothing that I would want to like attend or be part of because it's like, why am I going to go sit in the middle of a restaurant where everybody's 12 feet apart? Like that feels eerie to me, you know? Let me tell you something, sis. Mm -mm. 
I'm not ready. And I've had, had several people invite me out to dinner. You know, that's one of the things that I realized that I really miss. And I know a lot of people also miss it. And I'm like, I just can't do it. Even, you know, even outside on the bar, people get too lax because we're outside. Next thing you know, you get a couple of drinks. Somebody else is at your table. We don't have, we have not been quarantined together, sir. Absolutely. I got invited to a toga party. Sis. Oh. Sis. Uh-huh. The brother older than me. So oh. let's just start there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you went to the old school toga. I don't know what type of toga this brother was talking about, but I was like, decline, brother. I'm not coming outside to be around people with sheets wrapped around them and they in their 50s. What are we doing? I'm not doing it, y'all. Now, wait, wait a minute, sis. Did he said toga party or toke a party? Because I'm learned, listen, I messed up. There's a difference now. <laughs> Don't don't show up in your bed sheets and folks is rolling up. That's all I'm just saying from a friend. You don't want to roll up. They said toga. You get that pronunciation. <laughs> I need you to get that pronunciation. I got to double correct, check, I don't, sis. I don't maybe, maybe I had it wrong. And that's why I got the invite. I don't know. I will I will report back out on a future episode for sure. For sure. So for this quick dip yes i wanted to talk about black love they are back for season four on the own network yes and there's some interesting couples that are part of that show this season we have dule hill uh formerly of psych i believe okay. currently of ballers and he might be on something else too. And his wife, uh, Jasmine, mm -hmm. who also was on Ballers. We have girl Dame Dana Dane. Dana Dane's on there with his wife. Okay. I was like, fella, Dana Dane. <laughs> <laughs> Dana Dane. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. Took us back. Took us back. <laughs> Absolutely. So they get, they dropped a double episode to for their premiere, which is fantastic. I love when. Folks drop us a double episode. Me you know, too. We be needing it, especially if we've been yes. waiting a long time for it. But the thing that was a common thread through the first two episodes was this thing about integrity. And a lot Indeed. of the women, when they were talking about the men that, you know, they have married, they spoke about them having integrity, being very yes. serious, being, mm -hmm. you know, um, Committed, uh, with committed another. Mm -hmm. to the, the process of, you know, getting a mate. And it mm -hmm. made me think about integrity in dating, right? Mm. That's a biggie. That's a biggie. Not just here in the quarantine, but just generally speaking. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to, to know, at least from your experiences, based off of my experience, when I was dating, there was some questionable integrity going on. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not talking about just like, oh, you are seeing more than one woman, you know, and, right. and lying about it. Now that's right. like an issue. But I'm talking about like the, the, root, the root of your character mm. lacked integrity generally. And I'm Ooh. like... Where, where's your accountability? Like you wake up every morning, you look yourself in the mirror, you like, hey, I'm cool. I'm doing it. And you just continue down this path. What was your experience? Did you run into a lot of men that just kind of lack, lack that common core characteristic of integrity? You know, that's a very good question, sis. And I don't know if it was integrity as much as it was a difference in comfortability. Mm. See, because here's what I've learned from my last relationship. You really do have to be whatever it is that brings the two of you together. That thing may change and morph and evolve, especially as the two of you are growing together, building mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. learning one another, adjusting and all of that stuff. And I think that a lot of times people get comfortable 
in a relationship. I used to laugh at the old folks when they said, whatever you do in your dating relationship sets precedence for your marriage. That is very true. Um, I've had the fortune, at least that's the way I choose it. Sometimes, sis, I ain't going to lie, during this quarantine, I don't mind admitting I, I miss being in a relationship. I miss mm -hmm. my man, mm -hmm. a man, my mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And since I've been, every time I get tempted to sing that little, <laughs> I ain't got nobody song. Here come two, three stories that it's like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Lord, I thank you, Father. I'm not trapped up in a house with a man I can't stand. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm not smelling somebody else's funkin' farts mm -hmm. and mad about them and it. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean, I'm thankful. Um, I think that there's an awakening that happens in relationships and you have to be honest with it. When you settle out of that honeymoon phase and into the nine to five day to day living, that is when integrity and character and comfortability comes in. Um, I realized in my last relationship, I'm very germaphobic, like you know, my man likes to wear his street clothes and sit on the bed. Mm -hmm. That is not happening up in here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but it was something that small. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the origin of it, he was insulted because it was like, what you mean? I can't sit up. No. Mm. But when we traced it all the way back, mm -hmm. it was a difference in how we were raised. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I agree. I agree with that. What if you were raised to lack integrity in your personal and romantic relationships? How do you evolve from that? I don't know if you can. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm not with one of my exes now who called me the other day and, you know, he had a lovely gift and all of this stuff and he wanted to come up and I'm like, you know, I... This is also the brother that I know hustles in stolen goods. Mm. He's been doing that since we were teenagers, but that's all he knows. Mm. He may have a pocket full of money, but if he can get it on the get get on the black market, uh -huh. rather take it and take the risk. I'm not living my life like that. That was a mm. fundamental issue with the us. Um, I, I can give you another quick example. Uh, we were going to an event and I wanted them to go with me. It was for our beloved sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to go as black tie, et cetera, et cetera. Point number one, he thought that black tie literally meant a black tie. Mm -hmm. So that lets you know some of the differences socially that we were already dealing with. So anyhow, um, we got to the point where we were negotiating, going, et cetera. And I just felt the need to say to him, you know, this is going to be an environment where we can't, what's up, MF? Because, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might need to throw a handle on that. And, uh -huh. you know, we're, we're in a different environment. Know where we are. Uh -huh. And I remember one of the last conversations we had about getting together. It came down to that integrity spot. I'm getting ready to introduce you to the person who is the president of city council. And you were getting ready to say, well, you know, I've been stealing cable. Well, I can get you a hookup with the cable box. No, sir. Mm -mm. Sis, you see? Then folks want to call me bougie. Now we back arguing. Now we be you see? It's but it's an integrity thing. Why? Even if you still in cable, is that common knowledge is, amongst is, people that amongst are working and probably paying for their cable? Uh, which shows you what types of conversations potentially are happening that you are not a part of. See there. I'm sure that there is a circle of somebody sitting around talking about how they are siphoning the, the cable. Girl, I would be mortified, sis. I wish you could have seen me. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to need some snacks and a drink here now. Quick, Put quick. food and drink in your mouth and move away from the people talking, sir. Quick. Sir. Quick. Sis, what if their integrity, because, you know, the definition of integrity is mm -hmm. the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles or moral uprightness. He is known to be a man of integrity. What if the person you're dating lacks integrity around and moral fortitude around like black issues. 
Oh no. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I've actually been in that situation before. And I have to admit, I can remember when Hurricane Katrina happened. Okay, go mm-hmm. back there. Right. And um, there was a friend of mine who actually um, had tra- transitioned to Chicago and we were still trying to keep in contact and all of that stuff. And I never will forget the very morning that it happened and we were on the phone and I was like, why don't they get out? Can't you see that somebody is offering you an opportunity? What you knew yesterday. I mean, I was all up in my feelings. Uh uh Thank God for seasoning, sis. Uh Thank God for humbling, sis. Uh Uh I've had to ask somebody, can I get a plate over there? Uh Uh Or I will watch your child while you go here so I can have a meal. Or you know what, girl? I'm going to need a little grocery money. Uh I've been humbled. Uh Uh You understand? Uh Uh But when you're dealing with, I think, somebody who fundamentally cannot understand where you are in your root system, all I know to do is help people. Mm -hmm. All I know to do is love on people. All I know to do is if you need it, I got it. Or if I ain't got it, let me figure out, let's help and figure out how to get it. Mm -hmm. Not everybody operates that way. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about Black love and being on Black issues, I want a man that can understand and that can build this thing with me. Baby, when we out here, we face Karen and and, and, uh, Biff's, okay? We face them and I'm not going to fight you in this house. You understand? I want to be a support. Mm -hmm. I want to be a loving place for you to land when you come in because I understand that the world outside this dope. For a black man ain't always loving and welcome, but mm-hmm. my arms are. Now, sis, not every man wants that, baby. Mm. That's hard. Mm. What about you? What do you think when it comes to black issues and he can't get on the page? Now, baby, we not going, I'm not the type of throw a brick through the window type of chick, okay? I just, I, I need to be clear. I, I'm not riding that. Mm-mm. Oh, but if you want a good letter, so you wanted oh. me to leave a nasty A message on somebody's machine and get them together. I'm, I'm your girl. I'm your girl. Yes. Star 69 at all, uh, seven, <laughs> excuse me, star 67 is cold for the anonymous call. Star 69 gets you to call back. Yes. Sorry, yes. my bad. Star yes. 67 all day. Yes. But I'm not the chick that's going to ride through the downtown and let's tear up stuff. That ain't me. Right. So in my current relationship with my husband, my husband was not seasoned in the way of civil rights that I was. So I had two, we going out here and we going to be tussling with the police. I mean, I remember being four and, you know, you're just learning to write pretty good for you right. know, for, and I remember making my protest signs, baby, and making okay. sure my, my penmanship was good. My mama had to write the lines on the paper to make sure my penmanship was Hello. good for my little message. So yes. I come from a family of freedom fighters and folks who have used their voices and their bodies to to speak about the injustices that are happening in Black communities. And so I got into a relationship with someone who certainly is angered by it, uh, but doesn't have the direction that I had. And so it just more sits with him. It yeah. doesn't evoke or evolve itself into action. Ooh. And so I had to figure that out because mm-hmm. when we first started seeing each other, I was like, I'm going to, I'm about to, I'm, it's going down, writing a letter, going over here, doing this, doing right. that. I'm fired busy. Up. I'm fired up. And he just like, well, I don't really know what to do. I just know that it's wrong. And, and my first inclination is just to do like the absolute worst. And I'm like, well, that's baby, that's going to get you in jail. We can't, we got to do all things on this side of going to jail. We got to, yeah, come on. So, uh, and then I remember speaking to my mother about it. And I'm like, you know, man, you know, we was black history and, and you know, no right. heritage. And, you know, we we had to watch all these movies and all these documentaries and read all these books and all these other things that happened while how I grew up. He didn't have that same level of commitment and fortitude on the black power side. You know, yes. his mother was working and trying to make it and take care of him right. and take care of her brother, his brother. And so 
I was saying to my mom, like, he doesn't, and this again, this is early on, so this is like mm-hmm. probably within the first six months. I was like, mom, you know, he doesn't know about this, you don't know about this, you don't know about that, you don't know, you know, and my mom was like, everybody wasn't raised like how you were raised and everybody wasn't raised like how I was raised and so your job is to continue to use your voice whether it's in your personal relationships or in your professional relationships educate people so I think that what it taught me in this space was that he didn't lack integrity around black issues yes it was more so that I needed to afford him some grace mm. and 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 be a good peer educator so that he could, you know, feel feel it a little bit more. Right. And Catch so certainly up. exactly, he's not gonna go necessarily and read uh, you know, a, a journal article about, you know, racial, you know, well, we've racial studied media. that, sis. You and I have studied that in some realm of our formal, you know, both of us have PhDs. Right. We've studied that and people don't come to that by that, that right. space. That right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's not going by way of that, but he certainly mm-hmm. is going to get on a go off and go right. And go off. <laughs> when he get it, he, when he, he get got it. it. He got it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So that was my, my topic, sis, for the, the quick swim up. What you got us for today? Well, the only thing that I want to quick on swim by is kind of along the same lines of what you were talking about. Um, I saw the premiere of Black Love. And of course, I watch a lot of reality TV shows that surround around relationships, partly because I'm curious of how people come together. The, the, the markers of what I've known courtship Per the man pursuing. I mean, I re- I was raised in a household where girls did not call boys, Absolutely. you know, that type of thing. So like giving a guy my number and still wait at, at this age, I still very much think about that. So I'm in the process now of since I've been single for a little while and we are in quarantine and I do want to mingle. Mm-hmm. I want somebody to chit chat with on this phone. Mm-hmm. I want somebody that I can zoom with and say, hey, you know, and if we vibe, then let's meet up at the park or something you know because right. we got to do a socially distanced date right but um it's along the lines of finding that balance so I've had a couple of situations that have kind of broken out in my personal relationships and I don't think that you know I, I I've said to somebody the other day I said I really don't have a lot of friends who are happily married who truly like the person that they are with who truly enjoys the person that their company is with. And I started joking about it, honestly. I said, you know what? (laughs) I'm going to make a home for lonely married women. That does not compute to me. Since if God blesses you or the universe blesses you to love somebody and to share your life with somebody, how in the world can you mess all over that? That upsets me tremendously. Uh So let me ask you this. When you go through things in your relationships, and of course you do, you want to share things with your friends. Do you share knowing that, all right, you know, I may take a chance and say this to my girl about my dude. And even though I might not feel about this the same way next week or in the next 20 minutes, she might still feel all right about that. Is that all right for your friends to still be like, girl, he's tripping? I I think, and this is a this is a great conversational spot. The the maneuvering between mm-hmm. friendships and your romantic relationships and what to share and what not to share, right? Mm-hmm. I have learned in in my my time to be able to separate Mm. that which um, you're seeking advice about because you are unsure, I am unsure, Mm -hmm. versus I'm going to be complaining about my man to my friends. Mm. Different. So if me and him are having difficulty getting on the same page Mm -hmm. because I feel overwhelmed with, let's just say, washing dishes. Okay. I ask myself, am I sharing 
this story with my friends because I'm looking for feedback on what I can do better to mm. make the situation better or am I looking for an ally that's going to be basically, you know, talking about my husband and then we're going to get into some men bashing. Mm. And if it's the latter, then I don't mention it because mm. really I'm not seeking conversation. I'm not seeking even peership. Mm. I, I'm looking for uh, another ally for my negative mm. behavior, my negative co- communication skill or style or conversation mode. If I have an issue with my mate washing dishes and I haven't talked to my mate about it, mm-hmm. then why am I going to talk to my girlfriend about it? Because I don't, I'm not married or dating the girlfriend. So I I think that I I try to separate it and not mm-hmm. try to be like um oh my you know complaining about mm-hmm. it you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying because or if I'm talking about it coming with a specific uh request yes you know girl I need some help right I cannot get this man to get on the wash dish schedule. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like I've tried everything I knew how to do and this, that, and the other, and it's still not working or whatever the case may be. Like, do you, can you help me? Do you have any suggestions? Am I wrong about this? You know what I mean? Because sometimes you just may be thinking about it, you know, in a different perspective, wrong. Right. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't say I won't tolerate because that makes it seem like, you know, that's a power position. I don't, um, invite in negative conversations about the guy that I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. That's not mm-hmm. a space that I want my girlfriends to occupy. If my girlfriends are coming to me, if they see that I'm in something that ain't good for me, it ain't got nothing to do with the dude. It's got right. to do a hundred percent with me. With you, exactly. You come for me. Tell me, Aces, why you ain't never happy. What is happening? What is going on? <laughs> you ain't never smiling. You what's you know what I'm saying? We don't never see you no more. You know, we every time we call the house, you know, some or, or you know, address me and my behavior versus like him and you know what I'm saying? Like I think that we we do we do the blame game yeah. a lot of times wrong. And then I've heard girls say, women say rather, well if you ain't want me to say nothing, you shouldn't told me. Mm. And then you like, well, news flash at eleven probably ain't gonna tell you nothing else now, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really delicate situation, and I think that it can put you on the outside looking in sometimes. You know, I, I, I mean, as a single woman, I have to really guard my space against the negativity sometimes that my married friends can bring. I'm like, girl, the way you talk about this man, it make me never want to get married ever. This situation is not cute, but what has really been amplified since quarantine, I did not realize how many people are in their marriage lonely. Do you know how bad that disturbs me, Jesus? I mean, you, you don't have your mate that you can talk to. And I used to be, um, back in my day, uh, early 20s, all of my girlfriends was getting married, having babies, et cetera, and I was the one that was perpetually single or in and out of this relationship or blah, blah, blah. I was the one that wasn't stable, and that still persists sometimes today. But my point is, I can remember a lot of times being company for these women or being that refuse for these women and then they go right on back on to their lives with their mates and I'm the one that's sitting over here like oh okay let me give you this scenario how would you feel if you had somebody that was really close to you and they literally spent a week talking to you about this particular situation with their mate I mean it got to the point where I was like you know if you need a restraining order, if you need protection, if you need, you know, whatever that is, how can I support you? So we go through, and I mean, this was a critical time for me for this particular week. I was in the middle of stuff that I had been, you know, trying to work on, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't really have the time for you to come to my house, literally sometimes four, five hours a day to escape. That's not fair to me as a single woman. 
Mm-hmm. And this person was just really, now when I needed them the next week, huh. it was all my husband, this, my husband, that, my husband, this, my husband, that, my husband. That. I, I promise you, I don't get along well with women in that space. Mm-hmm. Cause if you want to put him all over the place and then when stuff is bad, you want to come pick me back up like a dish rag. I just don't deal well with stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And I finally have gotten to the point where I'm old enough where I really don't care who you are. I ain't going to deal with it. Uh Uh I can be a listening ear. It's like you said, it's different if you come to me and say, listen, I'm in this scenario. This situation is happening. You know me. Uh Here's my reaction. And how can you walk? And I may have some things to help you walk through it. Uh-huh. And I'm also the type of friend that'll tell you, girl, I don't know. Right. I've I learned that one real uh-huh. quick. A lot of times that's the path of least resistance to me. Uh-huh. I, I'll take it in and just be like, girl, I wish you the best with that. And at the same token, sometimes I'll leave them thinking, God, I just thank you. I'm not putting up with that. Uh-huh. You mean to tell me that that man ain't asked you how you doing? You done buried people. You done, you, the baby crying and howling, can't get to the daycare. You got your job in the living room howling. You got the, the, the first grader in the room, teacher howling. And you can't, you can't take a minute to put the PlayStation down. Since I'm not going to be unhappy with another person. Ha, I ain't uh-huh. going to do it, baby. Uh-huh. I'll stay single uh-huh. before I let somebody come in and destroy my emotional peace. Uh-huh. I think... Well, first of all, absolutely. I think that that's something that you should not do. I think that being on the outside and looking in, I I question often why people stay in things that they seemingly are just miserable being in, marriages, jobs, you know, friendships, whatever, it is. Whatever, yes. whatever it is. And the thing that I've learned is just to be a listening ear too. But the things that I've been trying to teach my friends especially is that they should ask permission before they lay their burdens down. Yes. Can because I talk I, to you about this? Can I it's talk to heavy. you about It's a little mm-hmm. heavy. Can you, you know, I know you got a lot going on, girl. You got capacity to manage this conversation versus yeah. just blah, 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 and then expecting you to kind of either fix it or agree right. with them or whatever the desired outcome is. Um, I think that it's an interesting space for single women and married women to coexist in too, because if you're complaining about your husband to single, to single friends, and this happened on black love, uh, the young lady was complaining about um, uh, the the guy Mm -hmm. and to her mother. And she was just like, you know, he's just corny. And I just, uh, I'm not going to be with no corny dude. And her mama was like, so all of these other things about this person is good, but you don't want him to be corny. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, and so I think that sometimes uh, depending upon what you got going on inside of you as a married person, if you are projecting that onto your single friends and saying how horrible your mate is, because of these small idiosyncrasies that most people would be like, I, I would love a corny man. I would love okay. this was about me, <laughs> corny and all, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like your complaint about your husband or wife in comparison to somebody who's yearning for a husband or wife, they're looking at you like something must be wrong with you. Because like, if you can't deal with just this thing that you are all hot and heavy for then what is it what what is it and so i think that we just as friends i think sometimes we make assumptions because we are friends versus asking permission to share and or ensure that that person even has the capacity to handle what you're going to even lay down you know what i'm saying like because everybody ain't in the right mind frame to deal with that or in the right heart space i have a friend who is, you know, this is my second marriage, so I've been married before. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who has equivocally said that she doesn't understand why I'm on my second husband and she is not had one husband. (laughs) Oh, that one comes up. I've said it not about you specifically. Mm -hmm. I know somebody on husband number six and I'm like, damn, 
I mean, save one. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, Literally, husband number six, the black Liz Taylor of the well, hood. That is Her a words, lot. not mine. That's a lot of husbands. My goodness. She keep trying, but go ahead. <laughs> so, so then it's like, okay, when someone has expressed that, and not yes. pointed towards you, but just expressing themselves, then it's like, I'm not going to say anything about my relationship, my husband. I don't want to talk about like any of the, the fun stuff, yes. the not so fun stuff, the good stuff, the bad stuff, because I don't want her to be feeling no way. Not that I, you know, so it's right. the, the, the management again, and the maneuvering of those types of conversations is just an interesting one to have to navigate through it is it's very hard and as women I don't know if we're always taught or encouraged to have your space the way I look at it when you're in a relationship your stuff changes I get that I've been in one Mm -hmm. or several I get it but there's a fundamental piece that I've just gotten to the point here lately in, in this particular situation where I'm like girl I cannot I cannot I mean, this situation was so dire. You acting like it was life or death. And then look at Facebook. Y'all all all huddled up and all that. Now, let me flip it. I'm equally as concerned when somebody, oh, my man is so perfect. He's so perfect. Girl, I know somebody that posts every day on Facebook about how wonderful her husband is. He bought me a cup of water. He looked at my baby toe. He smiled when the sun came out in my direction. Oh, he's great. I'll never be the person to tell her that he got a whole nother woman across. Ne- She'll never hear that crap from me. She, she may already know she it. Know. Exactly. That's what I- <laughs> she may already know it. Exactly. And is trying to position herself to, to project that. Project it that. Like keep people, you know, off of that. It's not worth lying about. God of mercy. Well, I wish that that would that bondage. Women would be set from that bondage. If you are dealing with another person, you're going to deal with some stuff. So no. there are going to be some happy times. Mm-hmm. There are going to be some not so happy times. Mm-hmm. There are going to be some who the hell is you times. Some tragic times. It's, yes. It's going to be some split times potentially. Yes. Whether you in still in the house or not in the house. That girl in the other room, him downstairs. Right. It's, <laughs> it's 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 an interesting space to have to navigate it is i'm glad we had a chance to talk about all of this you know absolutely i I respect the space when people are in a relationship but as a single woman i've learned to not let you project your crap on me Mm -hmm. i'm not jealous of you Mm -hmm. i'm not desiring and sitting on me oh no that ain't me Mm -hmm. but i will tell you i i appreciate it when my friends respect my space from being single i went through a nasty breakup Mm -hmm. and one of my girlfriends she was going through an exciting time in her marriage they were getting ready to have their first baby Mm -hmm. and i was one of the last people to find out Mm -hmm. and she said you know i didn't know how you would feel if i Mm -hmm. said i'm getting ready to have a baby and we're moving on I said, I would have been, I I am happy for you. Mm -hmm. And I would have celebrated you then. I said, but when I'm behind closed door, if I cry about it or not, baby, that's my business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on that note. Hey. This has been another edition of the Pisces Life. What we're calling the. Quick dip. The quick dip. I was like the quick swim up. It was so many things I was thinking. Quick (laughs) dip. I like the quick dip. I like the quick dip too. Cause you know, I, I said it earlier today. I was like, I wish I had a pool so I could just go take a quick dip and Girl. then get my afternoon started. It would just bring me so much, so much joy don't, right now. Don't say nothing. If you see me um, on Instagram in a kitty pool, cause it's that tight. It <laughs> is that tight. You hear me? <laughs> and once it get up over 90 degrees, I am not responsible for my actions. You will see me. <laughs> In my bathing suit, in a kiddie pool, politely watering myself. As, mm-hmm. as necessary, exactly. <laughs> if you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, you can hit us up at the Pisces Life at gmail.com. We are on Twitter, Pisces Podcast, two words. We also are on Instagram and Facebook at the Pisces Life. Sister, where can yes. they find you at? Looking really cute in your swimsuit, posing next to a kiddie pool. 
They can find me at I am just Letitia, L-E-T-I-T-I-A, everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, uh, um, Twitter, of course. And sis, if they are looking for you, where can they find you? They can find me looking in my backyard, up and down my backyard to see which one of these neighbors of mine's got a pool so I can go <laughs> make me a friend or two. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Kyle Loves You, K-A-I-L-O-V-S-U. I'm also on Instagram. Just add a two to that, Kyle Loves You, too. We are out of here, y'all. Peace. Peace. Two fish living in a dream. One swimming up, one swimming downstream. The place is live.